Who were the Kashkanes? This was one of many indigenous societies described as Chichimecas. When they first met the Spaniards in 1530, they inhabited the parts of the Mexican states known today as Zacatecas, Aguascalientes, and Northern Jalisco. According to Angelica Maria Medrano Enriquez, their territories were made up of small states, or casigascos, that included Tlaltenango, Teul, Jalpa, Huchipila, and Nochistlan. They bordered the Zacatecos to the north, the Guachichiles and Guamares to the east, and the Tecuejes to the south. It was evident that they spoke Nahuatl, since they were able to communicate with Nahuatl-speaking interpreters during their first encounters with the conquistadors and their native allies. When the Europeans first came to Zacatecas, they asked the locals where they could find gold, silver, and other precious metals, and they replied, Kashkane, Kashkane, meaning there is none. Henceforth, the Spaniards referred to them as Kashkanes. Although the Spaniards described the Kashkanes as uncivilized savages, archaeological evidence and ethnohistoric studies reveal that they were highly sophisticated. They developed their own architecture, a state-like government, and used the Mesoamerican calendar system. The remains of the ancient capital city of Teul exposes the Kashkanes' cultural sophistication. It can still be found today in the archaeological site in Zacatecas, known as El Cerro del Teul. In terms of administration, Teul was the center where all tribute from the Kashkan territories were collected. Discoveries of copper artifacts in Teul supports evidence that local indigenous groups were familiar with metallurgy since the post-classic period. On this site, archaeologists found the oldest known oven in Mesoamerica that was used for smelting metal tools. Material remains from other cultures Material remains from other cultures also reveals that Teul had been occupied by various cultures that preceded the Kashkanes since at least 200 BCE. But why was Teul chosen as the capital for the Kashkanes? The answer is found in its geographical features. In Nawa societies, city-states were referred to as Altepetl. Metaphorically, the A in Altepetl referred to water, Tepetl referred to hill or mountain. Teul was located on a hill surrounded by springs and rivers, which made it literally an Altepec. Today, you can find two temple platforms and the remains of a ball court on the site, which also features a large sculpture of a decapitated ball player. There were also elaborate human graves, known as shaft tombs, found on the site. Archaeological investigations on this site are ongoing, so we may learn more about it in the near future. Kashkan expansion into the Zacatecas and Jalisco regions began in the 13th century. They expanded first into the Malpaso Valley of Zacatecas, then made their way south and southeast. At Teocaltiche, they fought and displaced the Tecuejes and their allies, who included the Zacatecos and Guachichiles. They also took Nochistlan. According to Philip Weigand, warfare among the Kashkanes described in the Relación Geográfica for Teocaltiche indicates that they were not a united polity, if not a confederation of autonomous groups. For instance, Kashkanes fought off other Kashkanes in Huchipila, Jalpa, the Barrancas of the Rio Grande Santiago, and Yawalica in the Altos region of Jalisco. In 1540, the Kashkanes put aside their differences to participate in a pan-native uprising to fight off the Spaniards during the Mixtón War. The first recorded conflict between the Kashkanes and Spaniards occurred during Nuño de Guzmán's conquest of Nueva Galicia in 1530. Guzmán and his Mexica and Purépecha allies burned the Kashkan capital of Teul. The destruction of Teul was a symbolic gesture that could have signified the Spanish conquest of the Kashkanes, but this did not prevent them from rebelling. Guzmán occupied the Kashkan territory of Nochislan, renaming it Guadalajara, but this Guadalajara did not last very long since the Spanish were kicked out by the Kashkanes within a few years. Due to attacks from native groups, the Spaniards kept moving the location of Guadalajara, first to Tonalá in 1533, then Tlacotán in 1535, and lastly Valle Atemajac in 1542. The attacks on the many Guadalajaras were an act of retribution, since Guzmán and his men engaged in the killings and enslavement of indigenous people in central West Mexico, who included the Kashkanes.
In Zacatecas, indigenous peoples continued to conspire against the Spaniards in the first decade after Nuno de Guzman's conquest of Nueva Galicia in 1530. Although they allowed Catholic missionaries to enter their territories and convert some of them to Christianity, the Zacatecos called for a pan-indigenous uprising against the Christians. Their message was known as the Tlatol. While some Spaniards claimed that the Tlatol was a message spread by the devil, indigenous peoples stated that through the Tlatol that the deity Tezcatlipoca urged them to kill the Spaniards. In return, Tezcatlipoca promised a return to the old ways, the resurrection of deceased ancestors, and an abundance of food. Jose Francisco Roman Gutierrez points out, however, that the Tlatol was not just a war against Christianity, it was also, quote, a movement that sought to revitalize the threatened indigenous identity. The Cascanes and even the Tecuejes received the Tlatol and agreed to the Zacatecos request for a temporary alliance, which manifested during the Mixtone War. The indigenous uprisings in Zacatecas and Jalisco, known as a Mixtone War, was the result of many years of planning and coordination among the Zacatecos, Cascanes, and Tecuejes, who were under Spanish rule. While the Zacatecos were key in spreading the Tlatol, the Cascanes put it into practice. Native leaders who participated in the uprising was ordered their people not to obey the Spaniards. The Cascanes kicked out and stoned Spaniards in Jalpa, Tlaltenango, and Huchipila. In the process, they burned down churches and destroyed Spanish property. Many Cascanes left their villages and prepared for warfare in the mountains, known as Peñoles, which they fortified and filled with supplies. The first Peñol that the Spaniards learned about was the one in Tepetistaque, north of Huchipila. When the encomendero Miguel de Ibarra went to investigate the Peñol with five other Spaniards, he found that Tepetistaque had at least 3,000 to 4,000 indigenous men ready for battle. In Zacatecas, the Spaniards led by Ibarra approached the Peñol at Tepetistaque, but retreated after realizing that the Cascanes outnumbered them. The Spaniards later came back with reinforcements made up of 1,500 Tecueje allies from Tonalá and 3,000 Cascanes. On their way to Tepetistaque, many of the Tecuejes began to desert the armies. After interrogating Cascan leaders and Tecueje deserters, Ibarra learned that the Cascan allies conspired to betray the Spaniards once they reached Tepetistaque. They also threatened to kill any of the Tecuejes who did not join the resistance. Afterwards, Ibarra executed 10-12 to Cascan leaders. In their final words, these Cascan nobles urged their people to kill the Spaniards as they were being hung. The Cascanes present cannot take action due to the fact that they were outnumbered. When Ibarra took the remaining Tecueje allies to fight the Cascanes in Tepetistaque, they were defeated and retreated to Jalpa. At the beginning of the Mixtone War, the Zacatecos, Cascanes, and Tecuejes successfully fought off the Spaniards as they occupied the Peñoles in Tepetistaque, Mixton, Teul, and Nochistlan. The first attack on the large Español at El Cerro del Mixton was led by the conquistador Cristobal de Oñate. Oñate and his indigenous allies surrounded Mixton, but were attacked by indigenous resistors from the neighboring Peñol at Teul. This was the coordinated attack. As the Spaniards pursued attackers from Teul, the remaining Spaniards at Mixton were attacked by locals, which forced them to retreat. The victory at Mixton inspired Tecuejes from Contla, Ocotique, Acatique, and Matlatlan to also participate in the uprising. At the beginning of the Mixton War, the Viceroy of New Spain, Antonio de Mendoza, did not appear to take it seriously. This all changed after the death of Pedro de Alvarado, the same Pedro de Alvarado who participated in the Spanish conquest of the Mexica. He is famously known as the man responsible for massacring Mexica nobles and warriors during the ceremony known as Toshcat. Alvarado was now in charge of leading the Spanish assault against the Peñol at Nochistlan. During this campaign, he impatiently stormed the Peñol with his indigenous allies from Michoacán, but they all began to flee once it was clear that they were outnumbered. As the Spaniards ran away, they ended up on muddy terrain, where a horse slipped and fell on top of Alvarado, crushing and mortally wounding him. Alvarado died two days later in Guadalajara, prompting the Viceroy to take a more serious effort to end the Mixton War. Indigenous Zacatecas, the Cascanes Part 11, Denamasle. One of the Cascanes renowned leaders in the uprising against Spanish rule during the Mixton War was Denamasle, also known as Denamasli.
He was from Nochistlan and became one of the first Kashkanes to convert to Christianity and was raised by Franciscan friars. However, due to the overwork and exploitation of his people, Denamasle listened to the Zacatecos call to rise up against the Spanish. Denamasle was just one of many Kashkan leaders to encourage his people to move to the Peñoles, where they carefully planned to run the Spaniards out of their territories. Denamasle and his men successfully defeated an assault on the Nochistlan Peñol, which led to the death of Pedro de Alvarado. During the second attack on the Peñol, led by the Viceroy Antonio de Mendoza, the Kashkanes at Nochistlan were defeated, many of them were enslaved, and Tenamastle was taken prisoner. Indigenous Zacatecas, the Kashkanes Part 12, Tenamastle. Mendoza's forces and his indigenous allies took Tenamastle with them as they went on to conquer the last Peñol, El Cerro del Mixton, in 1541. When the Viceroy tried to negotiate the surrender of the Kashkanes from Mixton, they demanded to speak with Tenamastle. The Viceroy agreed to send the imprisoned Kashkan leader, who was accompanied by 100 horsemen. As they approached Mixton, a group of Kashkanes attacked the Spaniards and liberated Tenamasle, taking him back to the Peñol and Mixton. When the Viceroy's forces finally confronted the rebels at the Peñol of Mixton, the Kashkanes lost due to the sheer numbers of the Spaniards' native allies from Michoacán, Tenochtitlan, and Colima. Rather than be captured alive and enslaved, Tenamasle managed to flee from Mixton and eventually went into hiding among the Coras in Nayarit. Indigenous Zacatecas, the Kashkanes, Part 13, Tenamasle. Tenamasle was now in exile from his homeland of Nochistlan. He, along with another surviving leader of the war named Guajicar, went into hiding in the mountains of Nayarit with some of their rebel allies. Eventually, he sought out the protection of Franciscan missionaries, who encouraged him to turn himself in. Denamasle was once again exiled and sent to Spain, where he was put in jail while awaiting trial in Valladolid. There he met Bartolomé de las Casas, who may have helped him write his deposition, which described the reasons why his people rebelled against the Spanish. Thanks to the survival of Denamasle's deposition, we know the story about his background and participation in the Mixton uprising. While it is unclear what became of Tenamasle after his trial, it appears that he lived the rest of his life in Spain among Dominican monks. Indigenous Zacatecas, the Kashkanes Part 14, defeated by foreigners. As the Mixton War continued in 1541, the Kashkanes, Zacatecos, and Tecuejes seemed unstoppable as they succeeded in fighting back the Spaniards and their native allies during the first phases of the war. However, the tide of warfare changed once the Viceroy enlisted the support of at least 30,000 indigenous allies from Tenochtitlan, Chalco, Colima, and Michoacán. The Spaniards' native allies were known as Indios Amigos. Some of these allies were nobles, such as Tezcatlipopocatzin from Tenochtitlan and Don Francisco Acatli from Chalco. From Michoacán, there was also Don Pedro Quini Arangari, the indigenous governor of Michoacán, and Don Francisco, the son of the Casonzi. As the historian Ida Altman observes, the Spaniards' Indios Amigos served as the shock troops who attacked the Peñoles, outnumbering and overwhelming the rebels. The Cascanes Part 15, Death, Slavery, and the Mixton War. The Spaniards and their indigenous allies succeeded in conquering the Peñoles, starting with Coina, then moving on to Acatique, then Nochistlan, and finally the Peñol of Mixton. An investigation into the inhuman conduct of warfare during the Mixton War revealed how some captives were cruelly executed. The Spaniards had them blown up with cannons, mauled to death by dogs, or ordered African slaves to stab them to death. As these battles came to a close, it was reported that many of the indigenous fighters leaped from the mountains to their deaths to avoid being captured and enslaved by the Spaniards. This appears to have been the case in the Peñol of Nochistlan, where Tenamastle was taken. According to reports from the Viceroy of New Spain, Kashkan resistors from Nochistlan, who had sought to negotiate with the Spaniards, said they would rather die than give up after being told that they would still be enslaved even if they surrendered. The enslavement of Kashkanes and other indigenous rebels was permitted by the new rules of blood and fire warfare, passed by the Audiencia in Mexico City in May 1541. This allowed all captives of warfare to be enslaved except for women and children under the age of 14, 
One of the first reported incidents of mass enslavement of indigenous rebels during the Mixtón War occurred at the Peñol of Coiná in Tototlán, which had at least 1,500 men as well as women and children. After the Kashkan rebels were defeated, they were all enslaved and many were branded as if they were cattle. While the Spaniards encouraged their indigenous allies to take most of the rebels as slaves, reports suggest that the Spanish soldiers pressured or intimidated them into selling their slaves at ridiculously low prices. Some were sold for one and a half pesos each, and in one case, 30 were traded for a horse. When the Mixtón War ended in 1542, the Spaniards allowed some of the Kashkan rebels to return to their homes and granted them amnesty. As Idol Altman points out, however, this amnesty served the interests of the Spanish encomenderos who still needed them to exploit their labor. Many of the Kashkanes who returned home were baptized and given Christian names. Many of those who were enslaved were resettled elsewhere, displacing them far away from their homelands. It appears to be the case that the Spaniards intentionally sought to disperse them in order to prevent them from rebelling again in the future. Many of these slaves would work in the silver mines of Zacatecas and found themselves caught up in the violence of the Chichimeca Wars in 1550.